Good morning, everyone. Wildside here with uh, a little April Fool's Day preview of the uh, of the Gico Snap printer that I've been working on for the last five or six months. Um, we are opening up for business soon and uh, also releasing the uh, design files concurrently with the opening of the business. So, for those of you with the means, uh, you will be able to at least cut the stuff with your laser. I'm going to attempt something here today. I'm going to try and put the thing together right before your very eyes with no time lapse trickery of any sort. And uh, hopefully, I'll demonstrate uh, just how easy it is to put this thing together. Um, I said, hopefully. And I assure you, I won't try any uh, April Fool's gags during this video anyway. I may try some later in the day if I can think of something. Um, if some of you have been uh, reading up on this printer design, uh, you'll note that uh, there are no screw fasteners holding anything together. It's all mortise and tenon assembly with these little clips that uh, grab on and assemble the frame. This particular set of parts that I'm putting together, um, we're running a batch with a couple of other prototypes that we cut, and uh, we were trying out different wood from different vendors, and it turns out that not all birch plywood is exactly the same, so the thickness was a bit off, and as it turns out, the fit on these parts is a little bit, a little bit more wobbly than it is on the other two prototypes, but um, my feeling now, after having put this one together a couple of times, is that that's not really a big problem. Um, of course, that's just, that's just my feeling right now. <clears throat> we may find out later that this is in fact not the case. few different ways that these parts can go together so hopefully I'll uh, include some kind of identifiers on the parts uh, during the engraving that doesn't add too much to the to the cost um, if you've caught some of my other videos uh, you'll know that I'm also building concurrently with this design a uh, laser cutter based on Bart Dring's uh, build log 2x laser I hope there is that I'll be able to um, cut out the parts with the same skill that my current uh, laser service provider is, is doing it and uh, provide some quality kits. All right, so here we have our Y axis coming together. Some of these parts uh, didn't start out this way. I've actually had to drill out quite a bit. Uh, the current design has fixed all of these problems but like you'll see I drilled out uh, that whole piece there because it's really just too tight to try and assemble the belt and put in the bearings and so forth um, the way that it was originally designed at that time let's see I think here I have to capture a stepper motor. So all of the stepper motors are captive. They're not uh, they're not held in by screws. This can make it a little tricky to assemble because uh, you have to get the part in there some way. can't remember how I got this in there. I think uh, <laughs> how did I? Ah, uh, yes. Now it's coming back to me. Another 
things I'm trying to stay away from with this design is the use of any glue uh, for this particular reason that there are instances when uh, you're probably going to put in something backwards and need to take it out or you're going to want to modify a part at some point. So I don't really think having the parts glued in is going to be a great idea. So worst case scenario, some parts rely on having plastic ties to make the final fit nice and tight. But in most cases, uh, simply having the thing in the clip uh, is sufficient to hold it in nice and tight. Okay, now we're cooking. So this little clip here captures the stepper motor pretty much um, in the new design. Another clip has been added on the outside of the uh, stepper motor to also stabilize it here. And uh, in the interim, what we've done is we've modified the front face to accept the plastic tie as a temporary solution to hold the motor in until we can get those other clips designed and incorporated into the assembly. I hear somebody waking up. I wonder who it is. Boy, is that you? Baby boy? So there's your captive Y stepper motor. Turn this off later. Let's continue with the assembly here. So this is the base of the Z-axis. Basically, just travels through the through the bottom of the Y-axis and catches up with itself on the other side. And again, these uh, stepper motors are captive. Hi, boy. You want to come over here and be in my YouTube video? So again, the Z-axis stepper motors would drop down in here and be captured by some sort of clip. Um, although again, uh, what we've done in the interim is we've captured them with plastic ties and that seems to be okay and I'm actually quite happy with the way it looks. So the whole idea of trying to preserve the purity of capturing everything with clips uh, is something that is... Uh, sort of dying with me. I think I can live with a design that isn't totally totally done that way. The clips do look nice, so we'll use them wherever we can. Alright, so that's uh, most of the frame there. I'll set it aside for a second and uh, we'll cover the x-axis carriage and so forth. So we have the what I call the muscle man cactus, <laughs> uh, this part, and uh, basically we're going to capture some LM6UU bearings in there, and uh, so these are just captive linear bearings, and these motors here in the X carriage are actually captive. Uh, and it works quite well. I sort of left a little bit of uh, room in the design of these so that uh, you can use motors of different sizes. Um, this is something that was requested by um, Clement, I believe, is who suggested that uh, some people might not want to use the motors I'm using and might want to use some other stuff. So I did modify the design a bit to accommodate stepping motors that somebody else might want to throw into it. Again, more use of clips. Um, 
So I don't have another motor laying around. I'm going to just show the, uh, the uh, pulley side, idler side. So for the idler, we have these two, uh, these two inserts here, and your threaded rod will go through here that holds the, the idler captive. And we need two more of these guys. A little low on hardware, and I didn't bother to take this uh, LM6 UE bearing out of there, so I'm not going to put it in. But normally it would go captive here as well. And we drop in our base. And we need a couple of these U clips. Since they are kind of a pain to put in, I, I won't put the other two in since we don't have the, the captive bearing there, but basically they would go there and capture the bearing. And this is one end of your x-axis. <clears throat> Once you have it fully assembled, um, you put in these clips, and these are pretty much permanent. So I actually recommend uh, having several of them cut out. Not just uh, not just one set because uh, hey, if you ever have to take it out, you're probably going to break one of them. Um, good thing about the X carriage is that all of these parts are also RP printable. Uh, in fact, I I prototyped this design using my RepRap um, before I had access to a laser printing service. And let's see what else I can cover here. Uh, I'm not going to bore you with assembling the other side, but uh, let's see. Oh yeah, so we have the uh, the bottom of the Y carriage. Um, again, we've got linear bearings down here, and these are held in with plastic ties. So basically, you drop your drop your bearing into the slot, and then capture it with a plastic tie, like that. And uh, this is part of the design that's going to actually change. Originally, I was using a clip to clip this thing on the top, but it wasn't very tight. And that contributed to quite a bit of backlash uh, in the y-axis. So what we do now is we just, uh, we just loop one of these plastic ties through the base. And tighten up that zip tie. And so this is um, also the belt clamps um, are built into here. And again, those are held on with zip ties. Uh, you just insert your belt, pop it in there, and this is not where the belt tensioning occurs. So you just uh, you get it as close as you can, and then t tighten down in there and bite with those teeth, and that holds your belt captive. And then our tensioner actually occurs here on the back of the machine. You have a slot cut out rather than a hole for your y-axis pulley. Uh, so you basically set your tension by pulling back on this and tightening the nuts in place. Uh, let's see. I guess I can mention this part. I had intended on, on including some cable management in the machine. This, this is actually a, a smaller prototype. The actual design is going to be probably a couple of inches taller. Uh, which adds about 50 millimeters of vertical print area. But I was planning on using these clips embedded. It would actually go on the inside. I'm putting it on the outside to illustrate. But basically your, your wire management, your cable management would be uh, implemented using these type of clips. And while it does look pretty, it adds about $60 once all the pieces are said and done because there's so much laser cutting that is added by creating these little these little clips. So I think what I'm just going to do is instead of having the clip slots, I'm going to have a couple of small holes and again use plastic ties to hold and fasten wires and anything else that you need in there. So that's what I have for now. Thanks for watching. Uh, there's more to come.